Welcome, everybody, and thank you. I think there might be a couple seats left. Uh, please try to find a seat if you want to so you can be comfortable. I appreciate all of you coming here tonight. The uh, city has certainly been through uh, uh, some unfortunate moments in its uh, history, and uh, we certainly don't want to ever repeat, the, uh, repeat what has happened in the last few weeks. Uh, but before we begin, I have some prepared remarks, and the reason why we prepared them is to make sure that, it, that we cover everything, that the statements that I make are accurate in terms of numbers and, and, and uh, time frames, but also uh, to ensure that uh, you know, we try to make sure that all the issues that are, want to be addressed tonight are addressed. But before I begin uh, with my prepared remarks, I just want to say a couple of things. First of all, um, I want to thank uh, our folks, our, our staff members from the city manager, public works department, finance, everybody, our neighborhood resource officers, all the folks that were involved in trying to respond to this uh, incident, these multiple incidents that took place in our city. Uh, we call them community builders, but they're community angels. Thank you. These folks gave up their holiday time with their families and friends, and, uh, uh, and we certainly know what a sacrifice that they undertook in order to try to, to try to resolve a problem quickly and with some assurance that folks could return to their homes and be with their families. In addition to that, uh, I also want to thank those areas, those neighbors, the residents that were impacted by the breaks in the sewer pipes, the folks in Rio Vista, the folks in Coley Hammock, the folks in Victoria Park and in Coral Ridge. These areas uh, affected numerous homes, numerous households, and I have to tell you, the response that we have gotten from the people that, that were most impacted has been really great. It makes me feel good that we together can work as a community and make things happen. Uh, they were thankful, we are thankful, and uh, I wanna just give that shout out to the, to the folks in those neighborhoods. Thank you so much for being patient and allowing us to do our work. So tonight, I've asked the city manager, uh, his staff, and my fellow city commissioners who I'd like to introduce, Commissioner Moritis, Commissioner Glassman, and uh, Commissioner Sorensen, all of whom joined us tonight, and who this evening will be here to explain to the public the plans to rebuild our underground infrastructure. I hope, as a result, those in our community will once again recognize our commitment to ensure that our water, our sewer, and our stormwater systems will keep pace with the demands that we have put on them. We cannot have sewage regularly flowing through our streets, yards, or waterways. It is simply unacceptable. Now tonight, you're not going to hear any catchy phrases or slogans, uh, but rather we're just going to focus intently on the plans that we have for our city. The Commission intends to invest as much as possible, as fast as possible, across all of our vital infrastructure. Not only our sewer system, but our water system, our freshwater system, our stormwater utilities as well. You would think that installing new pipes and building new pump stations would not be the normally eye-catching news that grabs headlines, leads TV programs, or lands on your Twitter feed. But here we are. When this Commission took office in March of 2018, we vowed that infrastructure would be a top priority. In fact, one issue that led me to run for mayor was my frustration with the pace of the infrastructure improvements. It was something we sorely needed. Not one person, not me, not the commissioner, uh, commissioners, the city manager, no one on our staff is happy about the situation. But the fact is that we have made major strides after inheriting an untenable situation. The issues we are now addressing did not occur overnight, and they cannot be fixed overnight. But let's remember how this commission's tenure began. We were burdened with a management team that was in total denial of our condition of our infrastructure, and whose policies and priorities were in fact responsible for the years of inattention. They abandoned water and sewer master plans, including the replacement of the 54-inch sewer main that runs through the core of the city. This was a line that everyone knew was at risk of failure. And that's what happened in the run-up to Christmas in Rio Vista. The prior administration raided utility funds and spent the money to balance the budget for the city's general operations. This shell, shell game took $20 million a year that should have been earmarked for utility maintenance and upgrades. In all, they drained $120 million in reserves. 
It took us time to assemble new government at the top of the city and in the public works. Just a year ago, we hired Chris Lagerblum as our city manager. He brought energy and a drive for innovation. He then hired Rob Hernandez as his deputy city manager. And I'm pleased to announce that a new public works director is starting next week. After a national search, a new city the city manager has hired Raj Verma to head our public works department. And we're very pleased with that. Why are we pleased with that? Because he, he comes with 30 years experience in directing and leading water, wastewater, and stormwater utilities. The great thing is he also previously worked for our city. And he knows our system, and he knows it well, and he can hit the ground running. And he's a professional engineer. Our prior administration did not think it was necessary to have an engineer running the Public Works Department, but we do. Extricating the city from the annual utility raids was equally difficult, given the level of dependence that the prior administration created. I fought it then, and now we've changed it. This commission decided to wean the general operations off the use of the utility money for over a four-year time span. The city manager and the commission now believes that we can shorten that to less than three years. We have attempted it at all, all, if had we attempted it all at once, it would have shocked the budgetary system overnight by withdrawing the support in a single year, affecting many programs that this community depend, depends upon. Still, the money we have restored is allowing us to act more aggressively in addressing infrastructure needs. So what is the new course that city manager Chris Lagerblum and his commission have chartered? We have launched a five-year plan of major undertakings that are putting in place the means to fund this important work so the city can be resilient, competitive, and secure in the evolving world of the 21st century. Yes, even before the December breaks, plan, plans had already been drawn up and we were already at work. The irony of what occurred is that the city commission had already allocated money to fix that 54-inch pipe. That financing was based on engineering plans that were already shovel ready. The pipe was installed in the 1970s and suffered major corrosion. Worse, although it is the main line serving the center of the city, there was no backup, no backup in case of a problem like this. There was just one single line. The situation should have, been, should have been addressed long ago. City manager used his emergency purchasing authority to fund a design build project to immediately replace the disintegrating pipe in Rio Vista. That section of the work should be completed in about 90 days. This is an immediate fix that will rid, get rid us of the bypass that's, that's over land that was put in place to stop the sewage flow into the waterways and the streets. Two days ago, this commission approved the long-term fix. The, seven re the replacement of the entire seven miles of collection line from its start at the Coral Ridge Country Club to the sewage treatment plant at Port Everglades, seven full miles. This critical sewer main will be brought into the modern era. It's one of three primary north-south lines in the city. The other two are newer and do not pose a threat. The manager plans an innovative approach with a pair of contractors working together to compress the construction schedule to just 18 months from the five-year plan. This will take months, not years. Once that is completed, the old line will be revitalized and a liner sleeve technology will be utilized as a backup pipe so that should a break occur for whatever reason, we'll have an alternative redundant system to prevent this, the problem that we, that we suffered this past holiday season. And the managers also accomplished this at a lower price than anticipated. Our consultants had previously estimated building a new line would cost as much as $80 million. But we recently signed a contract so this would be brought down to $65 million, a significant savings. Hopefully this is a sign that all upcoming projects can be done at a lower cost. If so, the saved money will be plowed into further underground work and to help pay for these repairs, these immediate repairs that we had to undertake. In all, four major projects are now underway in response to the December events. The immediate repair in Rio Vista and the replacement of the entire 54-inch line that I just mentioned are just two of them. The others are the replacement of the pipes that broke in Victoria Park as well as Coral Ridge. So I cannot emphasize enough that as we stand here and sit here tonight, work is being accomplished in this regard. The speed and the scope of this action speaks to this commission's commitment to the community to greatly improve infrastructure. I earlier said that we have been making progress on infrastructure. 
with our sewer, we are ahead of schedule in addressing an action plan that the city set with the Florida Department of Environmental Protection following the breaks of 2017. In all, we have completed almost half of the 51 milestones listed in the department's consent order with the city, almost half. Four miles of new sewer mains now serve downtown and northwest neighborhoods. Work on the main serving uh, Las Olas is also underway. Our focus has been mainly on large length, length di uh, diameter force mains critical to the entire system that were made with high risk materials. Significant sections are more than 50 years old and at the end of their service lines, according to the Reese report, which we commissioned several years ago. Pump stations serve, uh, serving the Central Beach and Harbor Beach areas have been replaced and the one in the Imperial Point neighborhood has been rehabilitated. The city has been working extraordinarily hard to prevent the infiltration of groundwater and stormwater into our systems. Why is that important? Because heavy rains have, cast, have in the past caused sewer overflows. When they infiltrate the pipes underground, it pr provides more effluent that goes to the plant that shouldn't happen. The Reefs report indicated that this was a major problem that had gone unaddressed. As a result, some 43 miles of sewer have been evaluated to identify problems. Almost 1,000 manholes have been assessed. Today, more than 36 miles of sewer have been lined to prevent inflow based on our evaluations. So what's next? Plenty. We expect an assessment of the entire sewer force main system to be completed in two months. Let me say that again, in just two months. We have completed an assessment of the entire system. We will no longer be blind to where our problems are or the degree of the severity. <laughs> Further, the remainder of the work to prevent stormwater infiltration in designated priority basins will also be completed this year. That encompasses the entirety of Rio Vista, downtown Victoria Park, Flagler Heights, Dorsey Riverbend, and the Central Beach sewer basins. These were the areas that have experienced the most severe intrusion. We fully intend to complete the entirety of the work required under the consent order well ahead of the, December, uh, excuse me, the September 2026 deadline. Another $177 million is scheduled to be invested in 118 miles of pipe. And $20 million in funding is already committed to repair or rehabilitate 29 pump stations over the next five years. Moreover, we are making critical upgrades at the George T. Lohmeyer water, Wastewater Treatment Plant. Work on our 3,000 foot deep injection wells will be completed in March. I think we can say that despite the setbacks of late, Fort Lauderdale is headed in the right direction in fixing our sewer system rapidly and without delay. Still, I think the commission needs to commit itself to go even further. Several additional steps became clear to me and the rest of us as I met with our key staff over the past couple of weeks. I am proposing that we must immediately make use of the sewer line risk analysis to broaden our construction program. We have already identified in this review which pipes are at high risk of failure. We, would ex we should accelerate our construction program to fund the repair or replacement as soon as possible. We must be proactive. To fund these initiatives, we will look to our management team to recommend fair and balanced measures to raise needed funds. Keeping this in mind, residents should not shoulder the entire burden. We already are making developers pay more of the cost. This was unreported in the news media, but the City Commission had already raised the water and sewer impact fees assessed on new development in September of last year, and it went into effect in December, just a couple of weeks ago. The new rate structure was not, the, the old rate structure was not updated since 2005. It had been 14 years since we, we ever reevaluated our impact fee rate structure. The adjustments we made were dramatic. The sewer impact fee is more than tripled. Water impact fees are now increased by 40%. This will generate critical revenue that will be spent on expanding our utility network. I've asked the city manager to undertake a broader review of all other impact fees to see if there are other updates required, and he has promised to do this. I am proud to say that the leadership of the business community and representatives of the many developers have already told me that they understand the situation and want to help proactively in resolving the infrastructure challenges that we have today. 
I thank them for their willingness to be involved and willingness to ensure they pay their fair share. Let me talk for a moment now about development and infrastructure. There have been a lot of, there's been a lot of concern in the public about whether utilities, particularly the sewer system, can handle the amount of new residential and commercial construction. The fact is that what has transpired with the series of breaks is by and large the result of deferred maintenance. Experts who we have consulted are steadfast on this point. We had large pipes that could carry sufficient volume, but they were old pipes. Still, the city must ensure that it does not end up with a capacity problem. We would be negligent if we did not look at this as well. In my meetings with staff, I raised this matter. I expressed particular concern regarding the downtown where the bulk of the development is occurring. Public Works administrators have assured us that they have been pursuing projects to ensure that the downtown has the capacity to address the development trends. They have been adding more pump stations and redistributing the Flagler Village, uh, Flagler, Flagler Village area, the south side of the river and the Sistrunk area among those, these pump stations in order to guarantee the adequate capacity well into the future. For instance, by the end of this month, a new pump station will be, will be brought online downtown that adds one million gallons of additional daily sewage capacity in the area. The work that I mentioned earlier to stem stormwater infiltration is having a significant impact in helping to add capacity. And when I say capacity, I'm talking about the ability to process effluent sewage at the Lomar treatment plant. <coughs> The vulnerability of the existing water system was made clear this past summer when the FPNL subcontractor mistakenly drilled into the pipe that runs from our well fields to the main water treatment plant. The city scrambled to restore service. The most critical aspect of the water system in need of attention is the Five Ash water treatment plant. The Reese report tells us that this 60-year-old plant has a real risk of failure. The just released Corolla report has now confirmed that it needs complete replacement. Renovation is no longer a viable option according to the report's authors. We simply need a new plant. The issues at Five Ash are no secret, with coloration being the most obvious to the public. We have yellow water. Several international players in the water industry have expressed interest in a fast-track public-private solution that can bring more efficiency, more stable costs, guaranteed maintenance, and higher water quality. And this is a good thing. Fort Lauderdale has shown that these types of cooperative arrangements work. Take, for example, our arrangement with Inter Miami and David Beckham that led to the soccer stadium being built in the span of months, not years, at Lockhart site. The city had programmed that uh, redo of Lockhart Stadium at $35 million. We would have used taxpayer money to have accomplished that, and all we would have done is just rebuild that stadium. Instead, with the private sector involved, the folks at Beckham Inter Miami are investing over $130 million, not just in rebuilding the stadium, but also creating sports facilities in and around the area to help enhance the use of those facilities for their team, for the neighborhood, and for everybody in our community. Utilities around the world have successfully turned to this model to achieve great results in plant construction, so it may be just the right fit for us. We'll see. Still, a new plant will not be an overnight effort, so we are now taking measures to improve 5-ash until a replacement is online. We are doing more than rebuilding a new plant. The Reese report identified the need to invest more in improving our water pipes. The good news, we are making progress. More than four miles of new water main has been installed in, in Croissant Park and Lake Estates. And work is underway to replace deteriorated pipes in Victoria Park and Bermuda Riviera. <clears throat> By 2025, water main improvements will be completed in areas that include Bay Colony, Coral Ridge, Coral Ridge Country Club, Coral Shores, Lake Air, Palm Air, Lottergate Isles, Hendricks Isle, Seabreeze Boulevard, Riverland Road, and Twin Lakes, with some $53 million invested in the rehabilitation of almost 60 miles of water mains. <clears throat> Other critical issues are being addressed rapidly. Based on this summer's accident, the city realized the need to definitively locate key valves and consistently test them in order to maintain the redundancy in the system. We have now mapped 11,224 water distribution valves with only 10% left to go. At, Tuesday, at Tuesday's city commission meeting, we relaunched a crew whose job is to just test valves. 
They will ensure the valves are properly maintained and functioning. This crew was disbanded, disbanded by the prior administration, apparently as a cost-saving measure. Their job was clearly necessary. Experts are working on computerized modeling of the entire water system to identify improvements needed as a result of low pressure and inadequate uh, flows in the mains. The city has installed 22 auto flushing devices and will add 50 more within the next year to remove sediment deposits and biofilm from the pipes. And because redundancy is critical, we will upgrade three existing interconnections with the city of Pompano Beach and build a new one on State Road A1A. Design of this new interconnect is complete. Its construction will begin in the second quarter of this year. This commission has also been forward looking and safeguarding adequate water for supply for future generations in the face of sea level rise and rising consumption. We have explored several options, including desalination and the use of the deeper Fl Floridan aquifer, both very expensive undertakings. We now feel confident that our well fields are far enough inland that saltwater intrusion will not be an issue for many decades to come, despite rising sea levels. But as we must still accept the fact that our population is growing. And as such, we have joined a consortium of other local governments in a major initiative that's in, a, in conjunction with the C-51 reservoir. The C-51 was first contemplated as a regional alternative water supply in the early 1990s. Phase one is complete and only a limited supply of available water remains uncommitted after reservations have been made by other cities. So we jumped on it. <clears throat> we now have authorized the purchasing rights to 3 million gallons of water on a, a day with an option for another 3 million gallons. Another effort underway should help address concerns of some residents about unusual spikes in their water bill. Right? Our long-term plans call for the replacement of all water meters with ones that can be read uh, wirelessly rather than by crews that go door to door. This will allow us to provide detailed usage of, and reports to residents so that they can better manage their water consumption. This technology will offer real-time alerts to high usage so that they can act on leaks before receiving a large water bill, especially if you are on vacation or away from your home for any extended period. It just makes sense. <clears throat> so last me, lastly, let me address our efforts regarding stormwater. This work is critical in light of climate change. High tides and heavy rains now more frequently flood our low-lying areas. But we're making progress. In all, 165 tidal valves have been installed to prevent tidal water from backing up through storm drains. In the heavily impacted areas of Las Olas Isles neighborhoods and Rio Vista, work has also included installing catch basins and drainage pipes and elevating public seawalls. We have long waited for the city to move forward with stormwater work in seven areas determined to be the most lacking in protections and most prone to problematic flooding. I am pleased to say the time has arrived. The total price tag of the work in these particular, these seven areas, will be about $200 million and we are finalizing a rate structure that will be used to borrow the money. In the meantime, the city manager is using an innovative way to start work now before the bonds are issued so we can get the work started. With funding through a line of credit, we will begin stormwater improvements in the Edgewater, excuse me, the Edgewood and River Oaks neighborhoods. Work will start in the other areas, Durs, Dorsey Riverbend, Victoria Park, Progresso Village, and the greater Southeast Isles area of the Las Olas Isles and Rio Vista once these bonds are issued. All the work should be completed within five years. What will this money be used for? The city will add stormwater pump stations, exfiltration trenches, catch basins, stormwater pipes, permeable pavement, swales, force mains. We also will improve additional seawalls and dredge canals to address sedimentation and improve water flow. This work will encompass repairing and rehabilitating almost 22 miles of stormwater pipes installing another 129 tidal control valves and building seven new pump stations. As this work is in progress, the city will also finish designing stormwater improvements for neighborhoods in the next phase, and that includes Flagler Village, Harbor Inlet, Harbor Isles, Mellors Manors, Riverland, Sailboat Bend, and Tarpon Bend. The totality of the program I've dis discussed represents an undertaking without precedent in the history of the city of Fort Lauderdale in both size and in scope. More than $600 million will be spent in less than five years. 
One of my colleagues recently referred to us as the Can-Do Commission. Nothing speaks more to our results than the, than the approach that we have taken on these initiatives. To get us where we need to be, the city manager has triggered transformation in how staff thinks and about how we address infrastructure improvements. No longer will City Hall look at matters on a project by project basis and on a fix by fix basis, but rather we will take a comprehensive holistic approach. And the city manager is expediting work by bundling projects and using a variety of different procurement strategies depending upon the circumstances. This is more than just bureaucratic jingoism. Take the sewer pipe replacements in Victoria Park and Coral Ridge. Historically, the city would have taken the approach of simply removing the segment of the pipes where the breaks occurred and repairing them. Now we are replacing the full lengths of the pipes. In the case of Victoria Park that runs the breadth of the neighborhood, it does not make sense to know that adjacent sections of the pipe are likely to be in similar condition and wait for them to break before we have to replace them. I would remind everybody, though, that Fort Lauderdale is not unique. We all know that this is an issue that decaying infrastructure is being suffered by communities throughout the state and throughout the nation. A recent study showed that more than 23,000 sewage spills were reported to the State Environmental Protection Department in the past decade. Miami, Tampa, Boca, Jacksonville, and Daytona Beach have all faced sewage infrastructure issues recently. In Fort Lauderdale, we are moving forward with a sense of urgency and will ensure that no section of the city is left behind. We also are committed not to repeat past mistakes and nor to defer vital maintenance. There will be challenges, whether the result of an accident, climate change, or the failure of a remaining older part in the system. But I promise this, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, Fort Lauderdale will have the utility infrastructure that a modern metropolitan area expects and deserves. This is a vibrant, dynamic city that we can be proud of and a great place to live, to work, to raise a family, and to enjoy ourselves. We will be a resilient city, one with clean and plentiful drinking water, one with a safe and secure sewer system, and one without, unbowed by the forces of climate change. So this concludes my remarks. We have received questions both online and from members of the audience, and I will now turn the program over to Ashley, and uh, we'll spend the next half hour to an hour tr trying to respond to these questions. Um, and, in, and in responding these, to these questions, I will ask our city manager, uh, Chris Lagerbloom, and our city uh, attorney, Alan Boileau, as well as other members of our public works staff to assist in responding to these questions. So, Again, I thank you all for being here, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. I appreciate your patience in listening to these remarks. We're going to make it happen, people. Okay?